You have reached Atheist Republic voicemails. God may not be listening to you, but the citizens of the Atheist Republic are. Leave us a voicemail on AtheistRepublic.com for a chance to have your message broadcast to our followers worldwide. Send us your opinions, stories, advice, or concerns. Together, we'll build a platform for Atheist voices all around the globe. Hi, everyone. This is Sylvester from Nigeria. I hope you're all doing well. I suggest that we have a WhatsApp forum where we can share our thoughts. So, um, hello, I am, I am an Egyptian atheist, ex-Muslim, 16-year-old Egyptian atheist, ex-Muslim, and uh, I would like to tell you the story of my apostasy. I'm quite a new atheist, by the way. I just apostatized Ramadan, last Ramadan. Anyway, like it all started um, when I was quite young, when I was eight years old at least. Like the, the holes in religion started with when I was eight years old. And I was in America at that time. I, I was surrounded by Christians. And basically, I had understood what hell was at that time and um the the people around me were good people i I couldn't believe that they just could go and be tortured forever just for not believing in the same god and hell is is so bad it's it's so horrible so horrifying especially in the Quran, and how and how is it how how it's uh, described as this horrible horrible thing I could not imagine I could not imagine a good God and why would he do this but that thought would stay with me for a while and I kept it at the back of my head and I just continued on with my life now uh, when I was 10 years old I went back to Egypt and I started to I started to go to an Egyptian regular school. In Egyptian regular schools, they get a religion, either Christianity or Islam, and I, of course, I took Islam. It is mandatory, you have to take it. So I have, I learned this hadith, and it's a very, it's a very problematic one. I, I don't know why most people don't talk about it. And it's pretty much saying that was a guy killed 100 people. He goes to his wise guy, this wise guy tells him, to uh, go to this, uh, all the 100 people were innocent, by the way. So this guy tell them to go to this pure village. This pure village will help them repent. So this guy, so the guy who killed 100 innocent people, he goes to the village on his way. He dies, and Allah just forgives him, just like that. And this hadith is is used in Egypt at least to teach you how merciful Allah is, but it backs for it backfires badly. And it just means that Allah would punish somebody for just not believing in him or just having sex with him, not uh, without uh, being married or just being gay, but wouldn't punish somebody who killed 100 innocent people. And that, that's a huge problem. But I don't know why nobody talks about this. But I also kept this at the back of my head. But everything really, really started at two things. And when I first learned about homosexuality and the problems of Muhammad, especially Aisha and the mar- and its marriage. Now, homosexuality was something I figured out myself, and I had never, ever asked anybody about it. And basically, I just went to see what Islam said about it, and it's a, it's quite clear. It's not, it's wrong, and it's, it should be, they should be killed in the worst way possible, and they will all also go to hell for eternity. We must not forget that. And um, I couldn't accept that because I had already done my research, and I found out it's not a choice. So why would God punish somebody with a choice? First of all, is God so sadistic and? Dumb to to think that a human being would hide his sexuality for for his whole life, or is or is he just wrong? And 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 since he's wrong, he's not going. 
he's not real. And and the and the prophet and Aisha, well, I I went to ask my mom, and, he, and she said, well, yes, that happened, but she gave the well the regular Muslim Muslim uh, excuse that that was okay back then, and that could never ever stay. That, that could that could never, never that could never settle. And well, a year ago, I I became a liberal. And uh, then, yes. Uh, hello, hello. Uh, well, after forty years of agnosticism, the Sandy Hook school shooting put me over the edge. I am now firmly in the atheist camp. All right. So, um, I. I'm not sure, like, how to feel about religion and shit. Like, it was forced. Christianity was forced on me as a kid. And, um, like, I can see why people want to believe in something when they die. Because, you know, everyone's scared of death. Like, you don't know what's coming. So people make up these stories and they use them as kind of like a, I'd say it's more of like a controlling type of thing to like get people to do the quote unquote right thing because it makes them believe going to heaven or whatever. But I'm kind of stuck in the middle because like as much as I don't believe God is real is as much as I believe he is real. Like what happens if I die and all of a sudden... I'm in front of God, and I'm being judged for what I've done. In my whole life, I believed he wasn't real. All right? That's not a good thing. But what happens if I die and he wasn't real, and I did believe in him? You know, like, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be sad, but, like, I didn't really, I'm not really losing anything, you know? So, like, I don't know. I'm just kind of stuck in the middle because, like, Growing up Christian, you get this fear of God put into you, but at the same time, growing up and realizing you can make your own choices, it's like, well, damn, like, what am I supposed to do? I don't know. If we assume that a deity does exist and that this deity is omniscient, omnipresent, and omnipotent, and works by using powers of design, that I need to understand how this deity creates or allows the death of millions of children under five to die of natural disasters and cancer every single year. Either this deity is not omnipotent or simply doesn't care. In any event, to me, this deity is a malevolent deity or never existed in the first place. Please consider supporting us by sharing the podcast with your fellow heathens or donating by going to AtheistRepublic.com and clicking on support. Subscribe to Atheist Republic voicemails on iTunes, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast app. And please leave us a review.